Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past year, you've probably noticed that chess has taken Twitch by storm. And, as with all games, there are a wide variety of channels you can tune into. For starters, you've got your world champions and goats, who make the most big-brained competition in human history look like tic-tac-toe. Oh, there's the queen. There's the knight. And there's mates. Cool. Oh, that was closer than I thought. Then, of course, you've got your actual streamers, esteemed educators who've found a way to juggle professional play with guiding scrubs through the complexities of chess. Someone um, suggested I perhaps call you Hikaruwu. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I prefer, I mean, I'm, I'm used to, I, I've, I've heard a lot of French people say my name the other way, so I actually like it. I prefer it that way. So, <laughs> that's better. <laughs> that's better, yeah. Yeah, Got it. yeah, I've, right. a lot of people saw that. Okay, <laughs> all right. And last, but certainly not least, you've got your truly filthy casuals. Living, breathing papegas, who, to their credit, decided to wake up, exchange live stream fails for a game board, and think to themselves, I'm going to use a brain cell today. Papegas? What? Why did this happen? I, I didn't even know what that could- What the f*** just happened? But there's one streamer who, despite being a high-level player, hip with the kids, and hell-bent on initiating newcomers, doesn't fit into any of these categories. Well, two streamers, actually. Oh, oh shit! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! <laughs> Meet Alexandra and Andrea Botez, aka the Botez sisters. A pair of chess-fiending firecrackers who've made it their mission to ensure that the traditionally stuffy, gatekeepy, and all-around elitist game they love becomes as popular and accessible as humanly possible. <laughs> Even though the way they've decided to do that hasn't always garnered them support. Hikaru has just been really, really upset about the just chatting category thing. And, you know, Hikaru feels strongly about all of his opinions, and um, sometimes goes out of the way to make them known. So how did the Botez sisters become the most down-to-earth chess mongers on Twitch? In what sense are they democratizing Earth's oldest esports, and why have they gotten flack for it? She's in the car, positioned like a little f***ing dog, like this, like she's about to fart in my face. I yeah, felt like she was about to unleash a weapon on me. I had to get revenge. Andrea, put your ass down. And she's like, no, no, this is how I prepare myself. Okay, so first things first, who are these badass board game savants known as the Botezes? Let's start with Alexandra, since she's the elder. A five-time Canadian National Girls Champion, she worked tirelessly to win the US Girls Nationals at the age of 15, thereby earning herself a four-year full-ride scholarship to the University of Texas at Dallas. The fact that I was able to get a full-ride scholarship was super important, especially for my parents who had been, you know, prioritizing it for me since I was in high school. For them, they came, you know, from Romania, they were an immigrant family, so having education paid for in the U.S. was a huge deal for them because otherwise, you know, we were really worried about how we'd be able to afford college. So that was a super exciting moment. By the time she was 18, this American-born Canadian of Romanian descent had secured herself the title of Woman Fide Master, and instead of shipping off back to her birth city of Dallas, opted to study international relations with a focus on China at Stanford. She's back at Stanford, but not back to real work or school just yet. Helping us to break down the critical moments from these World Chess Championship games is, of course, Women's Video Master Alexandra Botez. Anyway, in addition to her nutty-ass work ethic, Alexandra boasted such an affinity for chess that she'd spent much of her life being hailed as a natural. I started playing chess when I was six years old. My dad taught me, and the way he passed it on to me uh, was a little bit trolly. So he made a bet with my mom, and he said that I will teach our six-year-old how to play chess, and and I bet she could beat you in two weeks. My mom thought it would be funny, so she took it. He taught me, you know, a couple trips. 
tricks, I was able to beat her, and then I continued playing and started competing in national tournaments in Canada. Now, even though Alexandra had dabbled with content creation in the past, it wasn't until 2019 that she decided to fully commit to streaming. It was completely a hobby for the first two years or so. I started increasing how much I would stream, but I only went into it full time after my startup failed and I was trying to decide where to go to from there. And even then it was a pretty risky choice. And by 2020, her channel was earning tons of recognition. Some people even drew comparisons between her and Beth Harmon, the precocious pill-popping protagonist of Netflix's chess drama, The Queen's Gambit. A parallel she definitely had some fun with. I'm not overthinking the fact that- ah! It's okay, it's okay, it's me. Alexandra even patented her own signature move the Botez Gambit, which entails sacrificing one's queen for absolutely nothing. This is a bad sack usually. You don't want to give a knight and a bishop for a rook and a pawn, which is what I just did. But since we're already up two pawns, I'm going to go, oh my god, I just gave my queen for free. The Botez Gambit, ladies and gentlemen. Now, part of Alexandra's rise in popularity was obviously COVID and the sort of online chess renaissance it helped create. From Magnus to frickin' XQC, Twitch helped this genuinely ancient board game appeal to Zoomers in a big way. So I studied international relations in college and there's this concept called black swans for things that are very unlikely to happen, but also expected. And you cannot expect that to happen based on previous events. And this is what happened with the chess boom. I was able to grow along with it and maybe much more so than other people. And on top of that, I was really the only full-time chess streamer who is not a full-time chess player. I identify myself as a content creator, not as a chess player, and that is very different than others. But it was also amidst all of this success that the channel saw the addition of Baby Botez. It smells like Mickey D's. It does. D's nuts. If Alexandra was the quiet, responsible, straight-laced sibling who always seemed like she was doing everything perfectly, Andrea Brand Risk Botez was at least on the surface, pretty much everything but that. Oh, I can't believe Andrea ate hemorrhoid cream. I didn't eat it, I accidentally ingested it. But do not think for a second that she was not an absolute shark once the pieces were set. Okay, this is a mistake. Now Ooh. the knight, the knight is misplaced and now he dropped the pawn. This is how you play chess, buddy. Boom, roasted. So what was it that set the Botezes apart? Well, despite being genuinely bonkers at chess, they were easygoing and approachable. By putting their personalities first, they made themselves engaging and accessible to literally anyone who tuned in. I never want to just do one thing. I would be bored out of my mind and I was starting to get extremely bored and extremely depressed and I was just doing 40, 50 hours of chess a week. It's just not stimulating enough for me and I'm not a professional player where it's like completely the nuances and it's my living but there's also a place on Twitch for these personality streamers who are able to do a lot of different things and that's the vibe we're going for while always making sure that the biggest and most popular thing that we do is chess because at the end of the day I do still want to give back to the chess community. So of course chess wasn't always the focus of their stream. Sometimes you'd catch them cooking. Other times, delving into esports. <laughs> hey, there you go. Hey, ha -ha. that was a good headshot. Ha, ha, that was a good headshot. Ha, ha, little jumping jack. Hell, they'd even go full normie and bang out Among Us from time to time. Uh, I need to see when the kill happens. Well, in my defense, I did see where the kill happened. By blurring the lines between board gamers, e-gamers, and variety streamers, the Botez sisters were able to cater to virtually everyone who hung out on Twitch. Whether you came for the chess and stayed for the content, or vice versa, no one could deny that the Botezes were dank, down to earth, and just generally unceremonious in a way that other, more self-serious streams simply weren't. Chess dirty talk sounds hot though. I was thinking about this last night. Flamin' buddy. What are you talking about, mate? Yeah, I really like the way she put her king on h7. Look at that king all cornered. What a slut. <laughs> the question 
was at what cost? You see, in an effort to grow their channel, the Botezes would sometimes list their stream under Twitch's hugely populated Just Chatting tab. This caught the attention of super grandmaster, content creator, and all-around chess deity Hikaru Nakamura. And, well, not in a good way. Seven to 10,000 viewers that are not showing up in the chess directory because Botez is streaming chess and just chatting. And um, and so what that does, I think, is that makes it very hard because when when you have advertisers or sponsors looking to looking to the chess directory and thinking about, say, sponsoring PogChamps 2 or other possible events, what it does is the numbers aren't reflective. The, the numbers aren't actually truly f reflective of the number of people watching chess. But the Botezes, they saw things differently. In our situation, we know that Twitch discoverability is a really huge issue with the, with the platform. And it's hard, even if you're making really good content, to get new viewers. And one thing that helps is if you're on the top of a category. So this is more of a learning what works best on the platform. Um, we checked with chess.com before we did and we said, hey, our approach is we're still playing chess. We still have the chess.com logo. Everybody knows what this game is. It's going to reach a new audience. Is it okay if we do this? Needless to say, this sparked a bit of a tiffle between the Botezes and Hikaru. He felt that by drawing viewers away from the chess tab, they were doing a disservice to the game that they all wanted to grow. They felt that the point was just to grow chess at all costs. Hikaru was ranting yesterday about how he thinks it's important to support each other and grow the community right. on Twitch, not only his own channel. This is why I exploded, because he only cares if the people he's supporting act the exact way he wants. No, it's not the community. It's the community that Hikaru likes. That is very clear and very straight. And if you think that's fake, then you haven't been watching chess on Twitch. So. Like, stop coming in with this propaganda as if it's the truth, because it's not. Okay. Now, in the end, Hikaru and the sisters were able to sort things out privately, and any semblance of drama was put to rest. Why? Because, surprise, surprise, these chess geniuses are adults, behaved as such, and the Botezes came out in an even better position than before. I actually apologized to Hikaru yesterday because I think, you know, whatever happens, you sh if you're public personalities, it's not something that you should talk about on your streams. So we talked it out. We're actually good now and probably closer than we were before. He even gave me YouTube oh, advice. Wow. Oh my gosh! Holy smokes! We were doing a big public announcement, but thank you so much! In just one short year, the Botezes have somehow solidified themselves as one of Twitch's most innovative and original forces of nature. In addition to standing up the most successful chess stream ever, they've befriended countless juggernauts, brought huge non-endemic sponsors into the space, and were among the game's first influencers to get signed by an esports org. You cannot plan for and often you cannot um, choose when you get that moment. But if you're lucky enough to have it, um, then you have to make sure you make the most of it. So for me, I, 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 I was just in complete disbelief and so, so excited to see it happening. If there's one thing to be learned from the Botez's meteoric rise, it's that there's no such thing as making something too accessible. They've shown that it doesn't matter how or where someone gets into a game when it comes to bolstering its success. Only that someone gets into it. That with just a little savviness and a shitload of spunk, even something as aged and antiquated as chess can be born anew. Hey. Yeah! 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 Yes! Hello, baby! I'm so happy, dude. Yes! I'm so happy. I think chess is the original esport. It hasn't, it hasn't been patched since like the 19th century. The, the, queen, the queen has been OP for a thousand years. When are they gonna nerf the queen? Oh, I don't know, dude. Dude, honestly though, it's bullshit. Like I, like this, I, I, I'm not playing, I'm quitting chess until they nerf the queen. I'm done with it. It's, 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 it's just, it's ruining the game.